Hello there, Jose Rodriguez here. Today is the last day of March and it's leaving like a lion. Yes, it's been raining all night long. I mean, steady, heavy rain and chilly, about 40 degrees. I just went outside to the post office to mail a couple of sets of PGI 29 cards to the UK and to Portugal. And yeah, I got chilled. Uh, Glad to be home now in my nice warm basement, drinking some coffee, some Java, and enjoying the surroundings. <laughs> Last night, I decided, hey, let's go ahead and bring all of those low cards that are reading low on my Pro 1. Let's bring them down to empty. So I started printing some 13 by 19s of some of the images that I've been downloading from some of these uh, free sites. And I just want to go ahead and share what I was able to produce last night. Let me make sure that I'm not shining all of the gloss. You can see how glossy this is, by the way. That chroma optimizer does a wonderful job. The blacks are incredible. Right here, this is totally black. The intensity of the colors is just magnificent. I have never seen this sort of performance, I hate to say it, even out of a top quality Epson printer. Oops, did I say I prefer my Canon to the Epson? Possibly. This box had a kink on it and it was actually dropped by the post office and produced a kink on it, even though Canon really packs this paper super, super well in, in a box much larger than it needs to. But nevertheless, it did suffer a kink. By the way, see right here, I got a full set of uh, PGI 29s that I have been able to fill with the ink that I extract from the so-called empty ones. And so I need to find me in the other three boxes that are located here out of your view some more dark gray. If I cannot, I need 20 more ml. If I cannot, I'm just going to go ahead and mix some of the precision colors dark gray. It should be just fine. They went through a lot of trouble to make sure that the grays do match in hue to the original OEM. There goes my furnace. It's getting chilly here. You saw the previous photo, and that was a very saturated, bright, kind of taxing image for the ink set of the Pro 1. The Pro 1 just handled it like it was nothing. Now here is the opposite. This is almost like no saturation whatsoever, almost monochromatic. But look at how gorgeous that came out. If you were here with me, you would be able to pixel peep. Let me see if I can put that up so that you can see what I'm talking about. It is magnificent. And I try to download uh, images that are worth printing because they need to be of a certain minimal resolution. What is that? Uh oh, got a little droplet of water there. I don't know from where. Must have been from me. So it has to be able to withstand the upresing or upsizing that Q image will automatically impart and maintain the amount of detail that is required for something like a 13 by 19 such as this. And this is awesome. I can see little pebbles on the water. All of the little ripples are there. This is maybe six inches deep all around and you see that person on the horse just galloping across that so-called beach. And it is lovely. It must be low tide. But beautiful shot, whoever took this, I commend them. That was a nice, nice photograph. Another super saturated bright sunset. So you can see this is way, way brighter and more saturated than we visually actually see with our eyes. So this was done in Photoshop, I'm sure. But still, the printer just handled it like it was nothing. The blacks right here are incredible, super deep. The detailing, all of the various tonality changes, especially here. This is where you will see banding. Any of the 
very gradually changing tones. If the printer cannot handle it, you would see banding. And so as you can see, there is absolutely nothing. It is creamy. It is like Mike Chen from Precision Colors likes to say, syrupy. And that is due to what? Those three grays. They're the ones that provide that tonality. And people think that the grays are only used for black and white printing. Oh no, folks. It is used even more for color printing. Here's that one shot of the Eiffel Tower that I did on that, I believe it was a Hannah Mule paper. I forget what type it was, but look at my last video, you'll see what it was. And again, the Pro One just hits it out of the ballpark. It is just gorgeous. Beautiful, beautiful rendition. This is just Pro Luster, nothing special. I use the Pro Luster OEM profile turned color matching off in the Pro One driver. I used, in this case, I used borderless setting so that the chroma optimizer, which I use on full setting, is applied all the way to the edges. It does nothing to the actual image, no expansion. It just allows the chroma optimizer to be applied all the way to the edges. Otherwise, you would see a discernible margin which would be hidden if you were to mat it. But often I just keep these in boxes and I like to show them to people when they come visit and, and, and so on. So people actually say, what is that border for? You know, I don't want them to know that a chroma optimizer layer was actually laid down and that the gloss came from that. I want them to just go, wow, instead of asking questions. Here's the photograph of the old gentleman reading the paper. Gosh, that must be a good life, I tell you. And you can see every single detail on the weave of his pants. Amazing. The blacks are as deep as you could possibly want them to be. Just the overall contrast range. This was a beautifully edited photograph. I did nothing to it. I just downloaded it, up it, and printed it with Q Image. Again, using the same identical settings. And what's good about Q Image is that I have set a preset for the Pro One, printing on, in this case, 13 by 19, but you can just change that on the fly. It doesn't have to be that way. And using the profile for it, for the Pro Luster paper with OEM inks. And back when I was using the PC inks, I ran out of them. I just have a tiny little bit back here left. Uh, the results were nearly the same. The gloss differential was a little bit more pronounced because no chroma optimizer ever created by someone else other than Canon can live up to that level of evenness. So, but you know, for $8 a refill, you can't argue with that. And if you go back and visit my comparison videos that I did back when I was testing the Pro One initially, you can see how entirely acceptable the results are. All right, now here is the choo-choo train picture that I showed you. This is a smaller version that I did on San Gabriel from Red River. This is the one I'm gonna to give to my grandson, put it on his wall, and he can look at that gorgeous steam engine day and night. I decided to make a bigger one just to see if it could stand up to the enlargement, and it did. It's not as tack sharp as you would want it to be, but you know what? You're not going to look at it this way. You're going to stand back a little bit. And especially if you put this on a frame, you're going to be two, three feet away, and it is entirely, entirely acceptable. Again, no banding on the sky. You see this very gradual change in tonality between the top of the mountains in the rear to the mid sky. None whatsoever. So very, very smooth and beautifully rendered. What can I say? Will the Pro 1000 live up to that? I think it will be even better. And so I am so excited. And we'll talk a little bit about it, that when I get done here. Here is a really interesting picture. This is something that will, it seems simple, but this will really challenge any printer. Tonality ranges 
from here to here, very gradual, especially transitional colors from this greenish blue, actually more like greenish, to a more bluish, cyanish, and then to the deep blue. And if you look at that, you can pixel peep all you want. There is no bending anywhere, no little steps indicating a change of tone. It is so gradual. And that is what has been said by others, not I, the Pro One excels at. So yes, I'm lucky enough to own a Pro One and uh, I will be lucky enough to own a Pro 1000, hopefully in the near future. And again, if I had, let me be really frank with you guys. If tomorrow I had to get rid of 90% of my printers for some odd reason, I would keep probably three at this point. My 3880, my P800, and my Pro One, period. If I could keep four, I would keep the Pro 10. If I could keep five, I would keep the Pro 1, Pro 10, Pro 100. And then the two Epson printers, that's it. Now, when the time comes and I'm able to find a good deal for the Pro 1000, that's going to be really, really awesome because, again, like I said earlier, there are possibilities that are quite good that we will be able to use single-use chips. They will be a little bit more difficult to install, and I'll give you a little preview of that. Pardon me one second. I dissected one of the Pro 1000 cartridges. And in the next video, I'm going to give you some data on the OEM cartridges. This little chip holder right here floats inside this cap. And this cap snaps onto the front. This is what actually attaches to the ink compartment in your printer. Okay, so this literally just floats inside here, like so. There is a little groove, and this sits on that groove, just like that. You can see how it, if it goes back and forth. Okay, that just floats. Once you install it, then it keeps it kind of locked in position. But it is sort of floaty, okay? You can still move slightly this way and that way. The chip, as you can see, is totally different than the regular Pro 100 or Pro 10 or Pro 1 chips. They have this rectangular wings on either side. And those, sorry about that. And those, just like the previously mentioned chips, have an open end and a closed end. See that? The little hole is closed. This little hole is open. So the idea is that when you first modify these, you're going to have to somehow preserve that. And the little posts are located right here. And you're simply going to pop your single-use chip back in there in the correct position, snap it in place. Hopefully they will stay put. If not, you will have to use some sort of like uh, double-sided adhesive or something to keep it in place. And then you pop this back in, pop this back onto the cartridge. So installation will be a little bit more difficult, but these are 80 ml carts, so they should last a lot longer than, you know, the Pro 10, the Pro 100, or even the Pro 1. Pro 1 uses officially 37 ml. We always put in 40 ml, and that gives you a little bit of a cushion, and it does nothing to harm the cartridge and its operation or ink flow. So that is it. We'll be, we will talk about this when the time comes. At this point, it's just a pipe dream at least, but it's a feasible pipe dream. So that's going to be good. All right. Thank you once again. Please subscribe, share, and like as always. Thank you so much for your support, by the way. So until the next time, happy printing, everybody. Bye-bye.